Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, we're featuring actor and writer, our dear friend, Jonathan Sheck. Jonathan exploded onto the scene as one of Hollywood's most handsome leading men in Jocelyn Morehouse's How to Make an American Quilt back in 1995, and if you recall, Tom Hanks's directorial debut, That Thing You Do. Since then, Jonathan has shown incredible versatility as an actor, and over the last 20 years, he starred in over 160 Hollywood productions, working opposite some of the most acclaimed actors, producers, writers, and directors. He captivated television audiences as the eccentric movie star in Showtime's hit series Ray Donovan and has portrayed comic book legend Jonah Hex on the first three seasons of DC's Legends. Most recently, he's reprised his lead role on the upcoming Blue Ridge, the series, which makes its worldwide premiere on April 7th at 8 p.m. on Cowboy Way Channel. He joins me today to chat all about Blue Ridge, the series, which is based on the successful 2020 film, Blue Ridge. Now, this is a six-episode procedural crime drama set in the mountains of North Carolina where Sheriff Justin Wise, who's a modern Western hero, endeavors to uphold the law while living in a small Appalachian town that time and justice has forgotten. I can't wait to hear all about this one. It sounds so exciting and suspenseful. Wait, welcoming now to the show is the amazing Jonathan Sheck. Welcome, superstar. Yeah, thank you for having me here. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, we've we've chatted before. You're a dear friend of the show. You predate back to our original first run on iHeart and what a success it was. I remember we covered some of your poignant moments as an actor. Now, bringing us full circle too. Your character, Sheriff Justin Wise in Blue Ridge, the series. How has the character evolved since the 2020 film? You know, I don't think that Justin Wise has really evolved since it, since that movie. He's still the old school guy with a, a deep moral credo that he follows. Um, and he wants to be with his, his family. He wants to spend more time with his family, but his job just keeps getting in the way. And Blue Ridge is set, we know, in the mountains of North Carolina. How did the the location and setting influence the storytelling and atmosphere of this particular series? What's out in the middle of nowhere? What well, feels like out in the middle of nowhere? And there's a different. Um, people do things differently in the country than they do in the city. So these country folk, they have their own rules that they go by. And uh, Justin's from. Justin's a, a former veteran who. Um, was in California and left California to go to a small town to be with his family, became sheriff of this town. And so he's an outsider trying to regulate and, and keep the law. You know, it's interesting because I haven't seen it yet, but the setting itself to me seems like it adds a very unique flavor to the series. You know, the the lush but forbidding mountains, the way that the that the that the short form uh, treatment has right. It creates an atmosphere that that's both beautiful and mysterious. And this offers such a fresh take on on the crime drama genre. It, it's like the perfect blend of natural beauty and suspenseful t- storytelling. Now, comparisons to other series in the genre are essential for context. Okay, so for instance, how does Blue Ridge the series differentiate itself from other procedural crime dramas? Is it more? character driven does it have a a distinct visual style or does it bring a fresh narrative approach to the table it it definitely is is unique it reminds me of more of an old school uh procedural like um it's reminds me of longmire but without um the psychedelics (laughs) so it's uh it's it's for a younger audience it's pg-13 so that i can sit there with my son and watch it who's 10 years old um there's not over you know explicit uh you know sexual tension and any anything uh there's violence but it's usually just these two fists going at it with somebody um you know i carry a gun try not to use it uh, but of course i have to um so i think it's it's unique it reminds me of uh, a little bit of dukes of hazard <laughs> some parts of it some things i was like this feels like dukes of hazard which is not a bad thing i love dukes of hazard there's a sense of humor to it um, yeah yeah, we have I remember Dukes of Hazard. Gosh, yeah. I feel old. <laughs> I love that. 
Now, you've had a remarkable career with over uh, 160 Hollywood productions. What drew you to Blue Ridge and what do you find unique about this project compared to your previous work? Well, I, you know, how it came to me is really quite interesting. So I I took my family. I had a 10-year-old I and mean, a little boy who was going into school, and my wife uh, is from Nashville, Tennessee. So we, we decided we wanted to get out of L.A. around 2018, and we moved to this town. And when I did, I, I left all my representation, everything behind me because – I realized that I wasn't, I wasn't living to my my full potential in my life. You know, I, I was on the cover of Vanity Fair with Will Smith in like 1998. It was the first cover of the Leading Men to Watch, and all those guys on the cover, they all all their careers propelled, and they were all leading men. And I really wasn't a leading man. I was more of a character actor, which you know people respect my work, but I wasn't really living my full potential. So I I, I let everything go. I decided that no matter what, I would give over everything and allow my higher power to guide me to wherever it would guide me. And it took me to the place where I called up a couple of friends of mine, one of them, Nick Gonzalez. I said, Nick, I need, need to find work. There's no way for me to find work. Uh, I don't have any representation anymore. And he said, you got to meet this guy, Gary Wheeler. And he connected us and Gary called me up and offered me um, the TV movie called Blue Ridge. And he said, you got to read it. It was about a man who left California, moved to a small town to be with his family. And it fit right in where I was. And as I was um, letting go and letting God, I found my way to Blue Ridge. And that's that's probably, if that answers your question, I think it does. Oh, it so does. There are no coincidences, my dear. And what this really just is a testament to, you are exactly where you are supposed to be. And it just warms my heart to hear how the story came about. Now I want to watch it even more because I can almost sense that you've poured your definite heart and soul into this one. Now, given your experience working with a variety of acclaimed actors and producers and writers and directors, what has been the most memorable or, or, or influential moment in your career so far? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. Um... I always give the Tom Hanks answer because he was so influential in my life and my career and everything that I do. Um, but the way I think that we set up the tone for Blue Ridge, that uh, it would be a safe environment for creatives. Um, every, everyone had open communication and didn't feel like there was any anyone who was, you know, more powerful than anyone else, that we were all on an equal playing field. Um, even though there's people that are show, Gary's the showrunner, I'm the lead actor. Um, we just made it a safe space. And, I, and that's one thing that I, I wanted to bring wherever I went. I wanted to make it safe for, for creatives because it wasn't so safe in Hollywood when I was uh, first starting out. And uh, over the course of the last you know, several years, we, it, we stood up against some of the bullies in Hollywood and, and made it safer. So that's what I wanted to bring the most to, to Blue Ridge. You're so mature. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't. I think I've become more of an adult. I've become more like my character, Justin Wise, for sure. Yeah, well, now now let's go back to Justin. So Justin um, is a modern Western hero. It's always interesting to me to see how these characters navigate the challenges of enforcing the law in small forgotten towns, so to speak, right? But I'm curious about the complexities of his character and how he handles the balance between duty and the unique dynamic of this Appalachian community. I mean, from how to make an American quilt to Ray Donovan, you've showcased incredible versatility as an actor. So how do you approach, you know, in, in particular, like this diverse role that you took on? And were there any specific challenges uh, or were there any joys or, or, or what were your um, what was it like portraying a character like Sheriff Justin Wise? Well, it's funny. There's a saying that we will become our parents, right? So my father was a Baltimore City police officer. He was a Baltimore City cop for 36 years. He's, ah. he's, just, he's as blue as blue gets. So when I, you know, every time I've, I've been on Blue Bloods, Chicago PD, I've always done these procedurals where I was a police officer. And um, this guy was different. He was he was the, the rock. He was the reflector of the community. And um, he had to, you know, has to take on the challenges that the, human beings, all the mistakes that human beings make, um, 
and that's reminded me when my father was a police officer. He was a beat cop in Baltimore City, he had a, a very different uh, setting, um, but he was just dealing with the humanity, humans, and the mistakes that they made and trying to set them right, like when to give them over to the authorities or, you know, when to just kind of set them straight so they wouldn't, you know, falter in their life again. And that's what I feel Justin is. He really is like he has a strong moral credo inside of him. He doesn't put up with any bull and he he does the right thing, whatever he thinks that right thing is. <laughs> it's interesting because these are the aspects of, of, of Sheriff Justin Wise's story that I guess you're excited for viewers to explore in the series. I mean, you've given it away so far in terms of who this man is. And I mean, with look, with such a, a rich and varied career, there's definitely a particular genre and type of role that seems to be fulfilling you. And and it's this, right? So I think you've come full circle and, and found a great, great way to reach your full potential, as you said yeah. at the beginning. Now, Blue Ridge, the series we know premieres uh, on April 7th on the Cowboy Way channel. What can viewers anticipate overall from the show? And, and how do you have, and, and particularly, do you have any personal insights or favorite moments from filming? I'd love to know that, that you can share. Well, my cast is sensational. Um, uh, but the guest stars that come are special because I get to be part of a lot of the casting of the, of the guest stars. Like Max Martini comes out. Um, you know, he's a personal friend of mine, came out and played uh, a wrestler. One of, every week something happens and Justin's got to figure out how to make it right. You know, figure out who did it or what went wrong or set the, set the world back uh, the way it was supposed to be. Um, and Max came out to play. He was a um, wrestling promoter. My buddy Michael Hearn came out. He was a wrestler. Um, and then I, I even got Ethan Embry from The Wonders, that thing you do, uh, to come out and play a very important role in the, in the piece. So, you know, I think it, that, that's a lot of fun. Like each week it's a little, everything's a little different. Um, something goes wrong and Justin's got to get it right. That, that same procedural that we've seen with, you know, um, uh, Longmire uh, and even when I did Blue Bloods and it was like something with, what was the crime that you had to solve? Very much like a police officer does every single day of his life. Right. Um, so I, the unique guest stars that we that we have come out, and I'm looking forward to people getting to see them and, and kind of experiencing my my diverse career, you know, this long career that I have, and and how I've been able to sustain these relationships. That bit, I can call somebody up and ask them to come out and play. It's fantastic. Well, we are out of time, and the series sounds so promising. It it sounds captivating. The setting sounds captivating and it's a modern western hero and the potential for intriguing crime narratives this is all right up my alley so i'm so eager to see how it stands out specifically in this genre and and whether it can be uh it, and whether it can specifically build on the success of the 2020 film so i'm i wish you all the best of luck my dear friend this yeah. should be a good one thank you very much you uh I wish I had all your words and you can go around with me and do all the press for me because you make it sound so much better than I could ever. And I appreciate that so much. That was our hydration with heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. Check out Jonathan on the, on the gram at Jonathan Sheck and be sure to catch the worldwide premiere of Blue Ridge, the series on April 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern on <clears throat> on CowboyWayChannel.com and keep up to date on Instagram at CowboyWayTV. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, 100% pure coconut water. Imagine a drink that's nutrient-rich, powerfully refreshing, naturally sweet with no added sugars, not from concentrate, zero additives, low in calories, absolutely no artificial flavors, and is so tasty that it will become your new favorite beverage. Enter Once Upon a Coconut, the absolute best-tasting coconut water you will ever try. Available in four refreshing flavors, pure, chocolate, pineapple, and sparkling with energy. Do your taste buds a favor and pick up some today at onceuponacoconut.com.